back to Political Capital, the intersection of money and politics. For the second consecutive week, Deputy Chief Justice Zondo dropped another landmark judgment. The dope ruling on Tuesday by the Constitutional Court has set tongues wagging across the country as they contemplate their right now to light it up, smoke it up, inhale Exhale. Since 2010, the now famous Dacha couple, which is made of Jules Stopes and Merkel Clark, have been preparing for this case and it has now come to a victorious end. Jules, the one half of that couple, joins me now for a discussion. Jules, thank you for your time. Let's begin by the judgment itself. Did it go far enough as far as you were concerned? Well, actually, as far as we're concerned, it didn't go anywhere for us because we are charged with dealing. And the judge said nothing about dealing. The case itself, the, the, court, the constitutional court judgment was all about privacy and the right to use cannabis in the privacy of your home. But we are classified as dealers. So it looks like we are still going to go back to court to actually clear our names and along with anybody else that is charged with dealing concurrently running through the South African legal system. By now, we're afraid with the fact that you're in for a long struggle, having come from 2010 to getting the judgment uh, only recently. How long can you still keep this up for? And how do you fund your legal battles? <laughs> how do we fund the legal battle? Well, we've got, um, we've got a portal called the Green Network full of really, really generous people who help us out every month with stop orders but um we do get funding from around the world and that's useful in foreign currency because as you know the rand is quite trashed so we hang on by a thread and sometimes we don't even know how we do it it's the biggest problem of all is is we, we could do so much if we had twice as much because we're only two people and we have some volunteers in the office but um it's a skeleton crew and one day, we hope somebody's going to give us a huge donation in US dollars so we can become even more powerful and do even more work. How far do you think South Africa is from catching up with world leaders like Canada, for instance, like Israel, where they've, they've been using marijuana in experimental medication for a long time? And as I understand, the FDA is about to approve a marijuana-infused uh, medication in the States that could treat epilepsy and seizures and things like that. So how far? are we and are we in the right track well you mentioned canada and you mentioned uh, israel but both their forms of legalization is based on serious control mechanisms in canada legalization is quite frankly just another form of prohibition there's some extremely draconian laws come out as a result of legalization if you go to ontario province it's almost impossible to smoke legal weed because they put so many rules and regulations in place. So for my money, this, this judgment today uh, in the Constitutional Court has overtaken those two countries in its sheer size and expanse. So we, uh, we think that South Africa could well be leading the world already in this form of legalization because all over Canada, there are restrictions about how much you can carry, how much you can use, how much you can transport. But here there isn't. You can grow as much cannabis as you think you need for your own personal use. And of course, if you're making cannabis for medicine for your network, your friends, your cooperative or your societies, you're going to need a heck of a lot of cannabis. So the, uh, one of the most profound parts of the judgment is we can grow as much as we like as long as we prove that we're not dealing in it. What real hope do you really have that the people who are against marijuana will actually be liberal about the application of the judgment from the Constitutional Court? That's a very good question. Uh, right now, Myrtle and I, the Dacha couple, are on a national tour, and we call it the Desired Outcomes Tour. And the Fields of Green for All nonprofit companies produced a 45-page booklet of all the ideas and all the constructs of legalization that are being tackled around the world. So we are doing a presentation down the eastern seaboard of South Africa discussing the possibilities and the ways legalization can possibly roll out. And the government can do one of a few things. They can try and completely put a blanket control on it, or they could embrace a free market economy. 
that if they try and put a blanket control on it, they will completely fail because there are 900,000 cannabis farmers in South Africa. And I would suggest they're uncontrollable. So they're going to have to look carefully at their options. And I hope they look carefully at our Desired Out Outcomes booklet. And we look forward to meeting them and discussing the way forward with the government and parliament. Because if they want to know how to legalize cannabis, ask somebody who's been smoking it for 40 years. Because <laughs> they don't have a clue. They, they wouldn't know a blunt from a bong, these people. Maybe they could all use a toke. And on that note, Jules Stubbs, thank you very much for your time, sir. I appreciate it. Well, lawmakers, you've been told maybe you should uh, sit down, relax, have a toke, and think about it. Well, that's where we leave it for Political Capital this week. We'll be back on your screens next Tuesday at 6.30 Central African time. Until then, put a toke in it.